In tying a typical bowline, you turn in a loop, then you take your bitter end, go up the hole, around the tree, and then back down again. In tying this knot, we'll start off the same way. We'll take our bitter end and run it through the hole. This time, we're gonna go through twice. And now we'll go around the tree and back through the hole. But when we do that, we wanna make sure our bitter end is longer than the two loops that we just pulled in. This knot definitely has a name. If you know it, please put it in the comments. But what we're about to do with these two loops, I've never seen it before, so I don't know what it's named, but to me, it looks like a Venus flytrap. We'll take the left side, the side with the bitter end, and we'll tuck it underneath the loop on the right. And then we'll take this end and we'll poke it through and create a buckle. Go around our anchor point. The loop on the left is gonna go underneath the loop on the right. And then we'll pass our bitter end through that window we just created. Now, when we pull on this, instead of slipping out, we have the support of our anchor point and it is extremely stable. And once the load is removed, you pull off your buckle and it comes right apart. Now let's take this to the tiebreaker and see if we can snap our rope without our buckle failing. Looks like one of our loops slipped, but in trying to pull this apart, this rope has fused itself together. And here's the other side. Let's see how we do with this. Not as bad. So it slipped on this side, and my thought is, since the rope is about the same diameter as the shackle, if I were to use a smaller diameter rope, we'd be able to snap it. Let's try it. All right, let's take a look over here. Looks like our buckle held, but we split off at the bowline. Check the other side. Same thing, our buckle held. And that's where we broke off. So if this theory is correct, I should be able to replicate it three more times. All right, looks like we slipped on this side, but we stayed on over here on the pole side. Looks like we are fused a little bit, so it looks like both of them are probably slipping. This time we slipped off the white pole but the hook side performed well. All right, we snapped the rope that time. Well, we broke off at the uh, bowline, but you can see our buckle is still in place here. Okay, over here we tightened up, so something slipped and I can't even pull it off this hook. So here's what I think is happening. Even though we pulled all the slack we can out of this knot here, it still wants to tighten up and adjust. And when that happens, the length of our two loops, they change. And this knot is dependent on keeping both these loops equal. As you can see, these two loops are connected by this centerpiece here. And so when one loop slips, the other one changes as well. So instead of just a single wrap down below and above, we're going to double that up and hopefully that'll keep these loops from slipping. We'll give ourselves a little more length. I'll twist in my loop. And this time I'm gonna lay one more right on top of it. Now I'm gonna take my bitter end, run it through once. I'll run it through twice. We want to make sure that our plating is nice and flat. And now instead of going around the tree just one time and going back through the hole, I'm going to go around a full turn 
and then I'll place it through the hole. Again, we want that bitter end to be longer than our two loops. Dress everything up. Oops. There we go. This is what it should look like when you're all done and dressed. Two loops below, two loops above. Now let's tie it into our anchor point. Place our anchor in between. The loop with the bitter end goes underneath. And then we poke through that window that we just created. There we go. With these extra turns above and below, this should prevent our two loops from changing lengths and make this buckle a lot more stable. For this to be a successful test, I'd expect the rope to break right at the entrance to the knot. However, if we find the loop still intact, that means that our rope slipped and our buckle failed. Let's give these four different ropes a try and see what we get. Everything came apart, nothing was fused together. So where would you use something like this? One option is a stern of a strap with a quick release. I'm comfortable using it as an anchor point in my truck bed. You could also use it as an easy way to lower something down. Or you can use it as a means to quick access to your gear. So why does this work? Let's go around our object here. We'll push our loop on the left through the loop on the right. Got that window and we'll plug in our buckle. Right, a lot of science going on here. It reminds me of one of those tens of gritty statues, you know, where the forces pull and push to keep everything in place. That's what's happening here. As much weight and tension as we pull on our free end, that's as much as we're going to push down on this top loop, which presses down this bottom loop, and the bottom loop keeps the free end, the bitter end, in place. As long as we have a surface that will support this bitter end, this is not going to come undone. Which is why you want to be careful if you use this as a bracelet buckle. If this bitter end gets pushed up against the hard part of your wrist, it's going to take a lot more force to get it undone.